Thank you for your patience as we work through technical, technical difficulties. It is 2020 after all. Good morning and welcome. I'm Nicole Piasecki, Chair of the Seattle University Board of Trustees, and I'm honored to be here this morning sharing this very special day for Seattle University with all of you. While the pandemic presents us from, prevents us from gathering in person, we are grateful that so many are able to join this live stream virtually. For the past several months, we on the board have been conducting a national search for Seattle University's 22nd president. We've consulted with faculty, staff, students, the academic set assembly, the Jesuit community, and alumni. I want to express my deepest gratitude to the entire search committee and to our two co-chairs who are here with us today, trustee John Vassell and former chair of the board, Betty Woods. Thank you to both of you for leading such a well-run, inclusive uh, effort. Our provost, Shane Martin, is also here today. In his first two years at Seattle U, Shane has done an extraordinary job working in close partnership with the academic assembly, faculty, dean, staff, and all parts of our campus and external community. As the academic officer, Shane has raised the academic excellence of the university. His leadership has helped move us forward in inventive ways that are shaping the way Seattle University is becoming the university in the Pacific Northwest that students come to for both an academically rigorous and inclusive education, but also are then highly qualified to take their place as contributors and leaders in regional and global businesses, institutions, nonprofits, and the public sector. Shane, thank you for your dedication to our educational mission. Before I turn to today's big announcement, I would like to invite Father Steve to lead us in prayer and make a few remarks. Now, I've already thanked many people who have helped us make this day possible. Let's also remind ourselves of just how Steven Sundborg has successfully positioned Seattle University for this very important moment. He has helped to elevate our academic rep reputation and stature, most recently achieving a ranking among the top 16% of universities nationally, and placing Seattle U among the top 20 universities of all universities in the country for sustainability. He has deepened our vital partnerships across the world and guided us to a strong compelling mission. What distinguishes SU from others is the passionate commitment of our faculty and staff to educating the whole person, to social justice and service to the global community, to living our values and for always standing up for what is right. This is the shared commitment that inspires and unites us every day. Recently, Father Steve has led our investments in growing our bachelor's and graduate level science and engineering programs, including investing in a new center for science and innovation. And this June, we will successfully conclude the largest fundraising campaign in our history, just as Father Steve completes his final term and president and in his own words, graduates with the class of 2021. His leadership has given us the resilience and innovative spirit to transcend today's challenges and continue to build a great future. So on behalf of all Red Hawks, thank you, Father Steve.
Thank you very much, Nicole. As a Jesuit and Catholic university, we try to begin all important occasions with a brief prayer while respecting the faith and the commitments of all. And this is a very important moment in the history of our university with the announcement of our next president. So let us pray. Let us thank God for all of the blessings on our university over its 130 year history, its Jesuit way of education, its students and alumni, all who have worked at Seattle U as faculty and staff, and all of our generous donors. We thank you, God, for this blessed history. We pray that God may bless the future of Seattle University by guiding and strengthening our next president, supporting our university community and striving to attain its vision, and helping to create a future full of hope for our students and alumni. In gratitude and in hope, we pray. Amen. Today is an historic and happy day for Seattle University in its announcement of its next president. We don't get to do this very often. Father Sullivan was the 20th president of Seattle U and served for 20 years. I'm the 21st president and I'm serving for 24. The announcement by the chairperson of our board of trustees in a moment of the 22nd president marks an important moment in our history and the movement of our university into a new era for new leadership and vision. I have long looked forward to the day when Seattle University could move to lay leadership after its long history of Jesuit guidance. We have anticipated this time of a new era and have long and conscientiously prepared for it. We welcome it. Our board has found the right person for this new era a person deeply grounded in the Jesuit and Catholic values, a person of great intelligence and even greater care for others, an experienced person of the highest academic standards, a young person of energy, optimism, and vision. Our next president will have so much to build on from our tradition and from what generations have created, and he will provide so much that is new and vitalizing to take that tradition into the future together with colleagues, friends, and alumni. Our strategic directions are called, quote, a Jesuit university of distinction for a time of change, end quote. Seattle University has found the right president to follow these directions and to develop his own new directions for a new era. I am personally thrilled with the choice of the university and I will be very glad with full confidence to hand over the reins to him next summer. I extend my congratulations and I express my glad welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father Steve. Today is the culmination of a journey that's included months of national searching, campus visits by the finalists, and the collection of ex uh, extensive feedback from our community. I'm very gratified to be able to say that it was well worth the effort. As we concluded our search, there was no doubt in the minds of the Board of Trustees that we found the right leader for our future. Our decision was as enthusiastic as it was unanimous. It is now my honor to introduce Seattle University's 22nd president, Eduardo M. Penlever. Eduardo is a brilliant legal scholar and a highly respected dean, professor, and leader of one of the nation's top law schools. His background, leadership qualities, and experience make him very well suited to lead Seattle University into the future. Eduardo is currently the Alan R. Tesler Dean and Professor of Law at Cornell Law School. He is also the first Latino dean of an Ivy League law school. At Cornell Law, Eduardo helped to guide the school through one of the most turbulent periods for American law schools in recent history. Thanks to his successful fundraising and openness to experimentation, Cornell Law School has thrived under his leadership. During his tenure, 
the school improve the credentials of its incoming classes while increasing the diversity of both the faculty and the student body. It also launched new clinical and academic programs in Ithaca, New York City, and online. Eduardo has also held leadership roles beyond the law school. He served on the board of directors of E. Cornell, the university's platform for online education. He spearheaded university task forces on campus speech and the use of race in undergraduate and professional school admissions. He was a key administrator for producing campus programming focusing on free speech and an inclusive campus environment. Previously, Eduardo taught at the University of Chicago Law School, Cornell Law School, and Fordham Law School. He has also been a visiting professor at both Harvard and Yale Law Schools. He received the, his BA from Cornell University and his law degree from Yale Law School. Between college and law, Eduardo studied philosophy and theology as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. Upon completing law school, he clerked for Judge Guido Calabresi of the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit and at the U.S. Supreme Court for Justice John Paul Stevens. Eduardo's scholarship focuses on property and land use and law and religion. His work has appeared in scholarly law journals, including at the University of Pennsylvania, Cornell, and other outstanding universities. His specialty he, and, his, and his voice is a leader in progressive property movement, driving many of his insights from Catholic school teaching. His research explores how property law creates or reinforces communal bonds and how property rights mediate the relationship between individuals and communities. Eduardo grew up down the road in Puyallup. His parents and four siblings all still live in Puyallup and Tacoma. He was raised in a deeply Catholic family with a special appreciation and commitment to Catholic social teaching. He understands the greatness of Seattle University's Jesuit education, faculty-led teaching, powerful sense of mission, and its location in the heart of one of the world's leading cities for technology and progressive thinking. He understands what makes SU Seattle's university. We are confident that Eduardo is a perfect fit. He's an outstanding university leader, an innovative thinker who understands the power of partnerships and collaboration. He is passionate about the power of the university to make the world a better place. I should also mention that Eduardo is a pilot. So between his vibrant leadership, his commitment to values-based education of the whole person, his deep understanding of the role of technology and innovation in making learning and life better, and his flair for aviation, he will fit right into SU, Seattle, and our Pacific Northwest community. Eduardo, we are thrilled to welcome you as Seattle University's 22nd president, and we also look forward to you returning to your home this June with your wife, Shital, who is herself an accomplished professor of law and your two sons. It is my privilege to introduce and welcome you to Seattle University. Ladies and gentlemen, President-elect Eduardo Penulabert.
Thank you, Nicole. I'm so excited to be joining the Seattle University community and to be returning to this beautiful part of the country where I grew up, just south of here in Puyallup, as Nicole said. I should say that my two sons, who have managed to turn into pretty passionate Mariners and Seahawks fans, are equally delighted at the prospect of no longer having to explain their loyalty uh, to puzzled neighbors in Ithaca, New York. I'd like to start by, by thanking Nicole Piasecki and John and Betty and, and really the entire Board of Trustees for the confidence they've shown in offering me this opportunity. I'd also like to thank the Jesuit community here at Seattle University for entrusting me with the stewardship of this university's precious Jesuit legacy. I'm very cognizant of the significance of being the first lay, per, lay person to lead this university, and I look forward to working with them and learning from them in the months and years ahead. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to thank and congratulate Father Steve Sundberg for his steady leadership of Seattle University over these past two plus decades. University leadership is not for the faint of heart, and to serve as a university president for 24 years is an achievement that fills me with awe. But it's all the more impressive in this case because during his tenure, Father Steve has expertly steered Seattle University through so many rough waters, through the Great Recession, and now over the past nine months through COVID, and that was just in the last decade. I look forward to working with him on a smooth transition as he completes the final year of an extraordinary presidency and over the coming years, I look forward to working with Provost Martin, with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Seattle University to build on the solid foundation that he's laid. This is a moment of extreme ferment, and some might say crisis for universities, rooted both in demographic challenges and in declining faith in the value of higher education. And as if that were not enough, this past year has seen the pandemic destabilize universities' educational and financial models. And yet, the value of higher education has never been more evident. In our complex economy and in our diverse global society, the knowledge, critical thinking, and exposure to different people and ideas that are the hallmark of a liberal education, these tools are increasingly essential tools for survival. These things, knowledge, the ability to think critically, have intrinsic value. And as John Henry Newman understood so well, it's our commitment to that intrinsic value that animates and justifies universities as institutions. But as a Jesuit Catholic institution, Seattle University takes that foundational value of liberal education and adds to it by embedding it within the Jesuit commitment to caring for and educating the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. And so to be sure, Seattle University aims to produce students who are knowledgeable, who have superb critical thinking skills who've learned to engage with a wide diversity of people and ideas. But it also goes farther and aspires to imbue them with a sense of purpose and a desire to put their education to work in the service of others, especially the most vulnerable. Looking forward, the challenges faced by Seattle University and by all of higher education are significant. Navigating them won't be easy. But Seattle University is a school that has tremendous advantages as it faces that future. And this sense of purpose and mission that I just mentioned is chief among them. The Jesuits throughout their history have been committed to engaging with the world and all of its challenges as it is, not, not shrinking away from them. As the Jesuit Howard Gray put it, Ignatian spirituality trusts the world as a place where God dwells and labors. Seattle University's deep commitment to providing an education rooted in engagement with the world could not be more important than it is today. In our country, polarized as we are along political and religious lines, Seattle University's identity as both Catholic and progressive gives it a distinctive voice as it speaks not only to members of its own community, but to the wider community here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. Our society badly needs such a voice. It needs that voice as it works to overcome the continuing impact of past and ongoing racial and economic injustices and as it seeks new models of interacting that can help us sustain our fragile multiracial democracy. Universities are uniquely places for this to happen. They're places for dialogue where people with different identities and experiences and values come together and encounter one another, and engage with one another. And, and so the development of a truly diverse and inclusive Seattle University community one that includes faculty, students, and staff alike is, is fully in keeping with its academic and Jesuit values. Particularly as we invest in enhancing the student experience, which, which is something that's absolutely crucial to the university's success, we need to keep front, front of mind the goal of making that experience a welcoming one. 
and the distinctively Catholic way in which we go about doing that will have the potential to contribute to the broader local and national conversation about racial and economic injustice. Our society also needs Seattle University's distinctive voice as it grapples with the, with the existential threat of climate change. In recent years, Seattle University's focus on sustainability has won it national renown as it has put its academic resources in the service of the quest for what Pope Francis calls integral and sustainable human development. In the coming years, Seattle University should make similar efforts to bring its sense of mission and engagement to bear on the study of another global challenge, the so-called fourth industrial revolution. As our society digitizes and as the pace of technological change accelerates, we risk becoming, in the words of the Pope, a people characterized by information without wisdom. Our efforts to counter this risk will benefit from Seattle University's distinctive voice again, from its Jesuit approach to providing an education that can bridge the gap between technology and humanity. Such an effort will draw on the full breadth of Seattle University's academic excellence as well as the, the richness of its values. Seattle University's location on the doorstep of one of the world's great tech hubs positions it perfectly to both observe and engage with those working in that industry, an industry that includes many of the university's own distinguished alumni. In the coming years, Seattle University should commit itself to becoming a global leader in research in this area and in the education of citizens who are data literate and who can contribute to technology and its development that works in the service of whole persons. Finally, and then I'll stop, American Jesuit universities have always been known for their powerful commitment to making higher education accessible. Accessibility requires keeping tuition down and expanding resources for financial aid, but it involves more than just dollars and cents. Today, online education has the potential to make higher education more accessible than ever, particularly for students balancing work and study. But online education is at its best when it's supplemented by in-person engagement. We're all experiencing that every day in our Zoom classrooms and even in, in getting this up and running today. In a dynamic tech-driven economy like the Pacific Northwest, there's an imperative to always be learning. And meeting that need is an important public service, and, and no university in the Pacific Northwest is better positioned to provide that service than Seattle University, with its diversity of superb graduate and professional programs and its downtown location. Expanding online and, and executive education will be an important avenue for extending the reach of Seattle University's academic excellence. So to conclude, I am just so grateful for the opportunity to become part of this distinctive academic community with its unique voice in higher education. Although these are challenging times, there are so many reasons for this community to be optimistic, and I'm very excited about the future of Seattle University. I look forward to working with all of you to help bring that future into being. Thank you. On behalf of the Seattle U student body, it is a tremendous honor to welcome Eduardo Peñalver as Seattle U's 22nd president. And to make you an official Red Hawk, we would like to present you with a few SU gifts. We look forward to the future that we can create together. Thank you, Marrakesh. We appreciate your leadership and the role, important role that you play uh, on campus. Now to offer a closing blessing, I would like to introduce another undergraduate student, Thais Hernandez Campero. God of virtue and wisdom, in the midst of a critical time in our world, we are here today to celebrate an important moment in the history of Seattle University. God, who calls us each by name, called Father Steve into the highest position of leadership here at Seattle University. You have guided Father Steve through 24 years of dedicated service, in times of joy, through difficult conversations, in times of sorrow. You have been his strength as Father Steve recommitted himself continually to touching the lives of students, staff, and faculty. We pray in gratitude for the care and compassion Father Steve has brought to the SU community 
and for his many contributions to Seattle U students. May we all strive to uphold the goodness of Father Steve's legacy long after his tenure ends. God of change, you now call our present elect, Eduardo Peñalver, to continue this mission of bringing our university to greater heights, and we pray in thanksgiving for their willingness to say yes to this call. We ask you, God, to bestow on our president-elect the gifts of virtue, wisdom, and grace to continue shaping the lives of our students in a holistic way. Virtue to encounter the difficulties ahead with integrity. Wisdom to listen to God's guiding voice and grace to keep moving forward. We also ask that God will call Eduardo Peñalver to always lead with compassion in responding to areas of need on our campus and in the greater community. May our new president inspire Seattle University educators to grow in their commitment to educating the whole person and empower all of us to a greater commitment to justice. God, you who are always attentive to our needs and the needs of the world, support our president-elect that he may continue to move our university forward in more fully living out our noble mission. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you again for joining us here this morning. Thank you for being such a great part of our community. Eduardo, welcome and congratulations. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.